Uh, we are going to read Psalms 103. Uh, I'm just going to read it from the New King James Version. You can follow me. Um, and then I'll spend about 15 minutes. Pastor has given me 15 minutes to speak from the psalm. Psalms 103, Psalms 103 in the King James Version, New King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As the father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his host, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his work, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the psalm, O Lord. A psalm of thanksgiving from David. Help us, O oh Lord, to look into it. And Father Lord, may our hearts be filled with gratitude towards you as we look into the psalm, O Lord. Fill us with thy spirit and give us ears to hear what the spirit is speaking to the church this morning time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A psalm of David, it says, up here. Well, it could be a psalm of you. You could write your psalm if this psalm is applicable to you. It's a psalm of David, but I would say a psalm of David inspired by God. For every scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. You know, every scripture is God's scripture, even if it says a psalm of David. It is not a psalm of David. It's inspired word of God given to Psalm and Psalm, and David just wrote it down. It is inspired by God. And we could apply the psalm into our life and say, this is a psalm of me, a psalm of you at the top, because if every word of this psalm applies to you, then you can say, this is my psalm too. I agree with this testimony. I agree with this prayer. And we have to evaluate our life in the, in the light of scripture to see where we stand. Where do our life stand? David, a man of God, according to God's own heart, the Bible says. So this psalm I picked up because when I was going through the Psalms, this found this psalm happened to be a very really ripe psalm, a psalm of thanksgiving. It is flowing out from his heart. I know we live in a time of uncertainty, time of fear, time every time, every day morning, we have new things happen. But in the midst of all these things, we have we have a reason to worship the Lord. So this psalm is introduced by David. And it's a psalm that he is preaching to himself. It starts, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The, start, the psalm starts twice at the top first two words. It talks about, hey, my soul, everything within me, look at God, understand what God has done for you, and start giving thanks to the Lord. And he is exhorting himself. 
you know, it's very important that we start exhorting ourselves also. We may not find pastors and teachers and elders and evangelists to come and exhort ourselves, us all the time. But every day is a worship to the Lord and you should start learning to exhort God or you should encourage yourself. Hey, look at the past. See the great things that God has done into your life and start exhorting God. You know, we are created for one purpose that we may glorify God and enjoy his blessing. All things are created for his glory. You know, heaven is created for his glory. If you look at it carefully and study about it, even hell is created for his glory. The universe was created for his glory. You and I are created for his glory. The starry host, when you look up in the sky, you see the starry hosts. That also is for the glory of God. Now Psalms 19 says, has the heavens declared the glory of God? The heavens declared the glory of God. When you look up, you see God's handiwork in place. And you look at it carefully and study it, you will see a designer behind the great starry host. And, it, and every day you see the sun coming up, the moon coming out. It gives glory to God. God who created it. For the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaims the works of his hands. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Psalms of David starts by glorifying God. If you look at it, it says, bless the Lord. It is blessing the Lord. He is blessing the Lord. You know, our prayers are mostly, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. But when do we get time over here that we look past our blessing, look at the blessing that God has given us and start blessing the Lord. Start blessing the Lord. Prayer is another way, way of worshiping the Lord. Yes, we can worship the Lord in singing. We can worship the Lord in preaching. We should also be able to worship the Lord in our prayer. Our prayer should not be just petitions where we ask God, but our prayer should be a worship the Lord, a fragrance coming out. And worship is every day of your life, brothers and sisters. It's not just Sunday morning when we sing a few songs. No, worship is for you to worship God every day, every moment of our, of our life. God has given us breath that is for God, for us to worship God. So when I am doing certain things, I'm driving, I'm working, I'm doing something. Always be connected with the Lord and sing his praises. We are to worship. Our life is to worship our God. You know, Psalms uh, 73, it says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And on earth there's nothing I desire besides you. My heart and my flesh shall fail, for God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength and my portion forever. I have many reasons to give thanks to the Lord. You know, we may have many problems. Life is full of problems, dear brothers and sisters, but it's important that we look back and see where we were, who we were, and what we have become. And so we have to give thanks to the Lord. Psalm of David, he starts giving thanks to the Lord. And verse three onwards to verse um, uh, 19, I believe, he is giving reasons why he has to worship the Lord. He's giving reasons. And the foremost reasons are written in, first, in verse 3 and 4. So this is a huge chapter. I'm not going to touch on every verse. I want to touch on verse 3 and 4 and then verse 13. Because today is Father's Day. I want to touch on verse 13. And I know pastor is going to preach from or to the fathers today. I will a message on fathers. But uh, I would like to touch on that verse, verse 13 later on. But here David says, what is the reason by him giving thanks? What is the reason? Verse 3 says, Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. See, your worship should not be just coming out from the lip. Your worship should be coming out from the inner man. That's why David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Not just your lips. Your lips should utter what your soul is giving. This morning we were talking about within the ELC youth group. We were talking about body, soul and spirit. And the soul is revived or renewed. And he worships the Lord. And that's where God wants us. See lip service to God. God knows us. He sees through you. Whether you are a genuine Christian or not. 
he sees through you. Our worship is acceptable when our soul worships the Lord. And our soul can only worship the Lord when we count and recount God's blessings in our life. And here, the main reason that David gives thanks to the Lord is because God redeemed his life from destruction. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a reason to give thanks to the Lord because we were in that broad path of destruction that takes us to eternal death. But God in his mercy, in his great infinite mercy, picked you and me to pull us out from this broad way of destruction broad path of destruction into this narrow path that he has placed you by his grace not because of your righteous deed because he loved you because he loved you and there is no reason for him to love you i will show compassion on those who have compassion i will show mercy on those who have mercy it is god's sovereign will and we have to be just thankful that god has chosen us out of the multitude of people to be his children and he has placed us in this narrow path we have a reason like david says you know he redeemed my life from destruction yes my life has been redeemed and so we worship so worship the lord like david worships with all your heart mind soul and strength with the, your body you know david danced before god you know he was not mumbling his songs it is very really hard sometimes to hear somebody standing next to you to sing, hear him sing or her sing. Why? Because it is not coming from the soul. But if it is coming from the soul, you will rejoice and give thanks to the Lord, remembering his blessings. And what is the blessing that you remember? Oh, I was the path of destruction. I was dead in my trespass and sin. But God, with his infinite love, his mercy, pulled me out from that mighty clay, from the darkness, and he put me on the rock. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I am saved saved person of God. You know, he gives about 15, 16 reasons over here. But I'm saying the first two reasons is enough for us to worship the Lord all the days of our life. You know, he's not talking about blessings that he received, material blessings that he received. He's not talking about the great job that he has or the king that he became. He's not talking about the great wealth that he has. Oh, he's not praising God because of his name that he had. Oh, he is praising to God. Oh, God, you redeemed me. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why he's worshiping the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, when we reflect back in our life, do you have a reason to give thanks to the Lord? Your life should be a life of worship. Gloominess should not be in your face. You should be always excited. Oh, when he, you know, the Bible word says, I was, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, worship should be every day. Paul Washer one day said, you know, God has given me life. It is for the glory of God. If I become sick, it is for the glory of God. If I have to get well from my sickness, it is also for the glory of God. But if I have to die in my sickness, that also is for the glory of God. You are not the center of attraction. You are not the center of anything. God is, and we are here to glorify God. Every breath that we take is for God's glory. So remove the gloominess from your face. Have a smile. Give joy. Portray joy. Eliminate joy. Always smile. Even when you're going through distress in your life, when you are blocked, you said, hey man, I'm stuck between a hard place and a rock. Oh, over there also, you have a reason to give thanks to the Lord because God has redeemed your soul. Your soul will be with the Lord. And all brothers and sisters who believe this, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord because God has saved our souls. It is not I who saved it. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I can go on and go on and go on. You know how I go on, but let's go to verse 13 over here, which says, As a father shows compassion on his children, so the Lord shows compassion on those who fear him. As a father shows compassion on those he, on, on his children, the Lord shows compassion on his children. It is a psalm written, now, when you look at Psalm, or David, David was not a great father. If you study great fathers, all his children were spoiled. All, he lost all his children. But when you look at David's father, Jesse, he can't tell that, hey, I have a great father because Jesse, his father, also forgot him. You remember that story when Samuel came home 
to anoint one of the king of one of the sons of Jesse as the next king. The eighth son was missing. Who was the eighth son? David. The youngest one was missing. Where was he? He was tending the sheep. Even the father forgot him. And Samuel had to say, hey man, I'm here to anoint one of your sons. That is true. I'm here to anoint one of your sons. But where is your son? Is this, are these the only sons you have? Even the father forgot his son over there. An earthly father can forget. But a godly father cannot forget you even if you are a shepherd boy. Even if you are a person of less significance, God the Father knows everyone and he doesn't look at your height, he doesn't look at your royalty, he doesn't, doesn't look at your money, he doesn't look at your beauty, he doesn't look at your height, but he chooses who he chooses and in this list of eight sons, he chose the youngest one, the unwanted son, David, to be the next king of Israel. This father, this psalm, David is comparing for some reason as a father shows compassion. Now, Father's Day, congratulations, fathers. God bless you. You know, you have a great responsibility as fathers. And what are the responsibilities of a father? So here we talk about father. But let's talk about what are the responsibilities of a father. You know, a father is supposed to protect, correct? Every father would protect. He is the provider of his family. He is supposed to be giving directions to his children. He is the one who inspires his children. He is the one who shows affection. You know, he is the greatest influencer in his child's life. My father, my great father, you know, whatever father says, the son just listens, the daughter just listens. You know, he is a person who is responsible for disciplining his children. This is what the father's responsibilities are. There could be more, but in a nutshell. Now, this is what every father would do, a believer, an unbeliever, everybody would do. You know, he protects his family. Now, I was talking to George Paul the other day. George Paul has a new puppy. And he was telling me, while they were taking the puppy and going, the father of the puppy ran after that car for over a mile, would not let the puppy be taken. An animal can show compassion and show love to his children. He tries to protect his family. Fathers of all people, believers and unbelievers, would do all these things, protection, provision, direction, inspiration, affection. You know, he could influence his children. You know, he can show compassion. He can discipline the children too. But remember, you are not just ordinary father. You are a godly father, saved by grace. You have been saved. So as a father, your greatest responsibility is the salvation of your children. As a father shows compassion, you should show compassion, not for the earthly body and the necessities of the earth. Yes, you need to do that. But more importantly, as fathers, our responsibility is the children's soul, their life, their in eternity. We are responsible. The earthly father may do everything, but he can't do the thing that God wants you to do. And that is speak life into your children. Share the gospel message. It is God-given responsibility to every father. Not the pastor of the church, not the elders of the church, not anybody else. But the father is, is given the responsibility of inculcating in, in, in his children the fear of God. The fear of the Lord will keep you from sinning. It is a father's responsibility to share the gospel message to the children and make sure that the children are saved. Even before the child is born, when the doctor says your wife is pregnant, oh, praise be to God. The prayer starts, Lord, save my child from destruction of the pit. Save him from his eternal death and, be, and he should be a man of God or a child of God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 90, God says to Abraham, for I have known him in order that he may companion his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteous and justice. What is Abraham being told? That he may command his children to keep the way of the Lord. That is our primary responsibility as a father. You know, we are to protect our children from everything that we have around the world. But more importantly, we have to protect his soul. We have to provide nourishment to his inner man, his soul, 
We have to share the word of God. It is a father's responsibility. It is father's responsibility to give direction, godly direction to the children. It is a father's responsibility to inspire the children to walk in the ways of the Lord. It is, it is the father's responsibility to show affection. We can't indulge our children in earthly things and not nourish his soul. We will be doing a greatest injustice to a child if I, we as fathers do not do the thing that God has commanded us. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we read, it, uh, we, we read what God has told the fathers, and I'll conclude with that. I don't want to spend more time. Pastor is going to speak more about it. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it talks about, I think verse 6 says, and these words which I commanded you today shall be in your heart. Talking to the fathers, you can't just give lip service. It has to be coming within you. You have to be saved first. You have to study the word of God first. You have to dwell and meditate in God's word. And the Holy Spirit will inspire you to share the word of God with your children. It has to be in your heart first. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as signs in your hands. You shall be at it, as they shall be. As four lets before between your eyes, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. The greatest responsibility has a, a father's, it's a responsibility that God is giving the father, that we may share the knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord will keep the child from sinning. Dear brothers and sisters, Psalms 103 starts with blessing the Lord and Psalms 103 ends with blessing the Lord. It tells, bless all the starry host, bless all his dominion, bless all the angels, angels bless the Lord for he is your creator. And at the end, he again go back and tells, oh my soul, bless the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, if God gives us a single day in our life, it is for his glory and we glorify God from within within us for everything that he has done for us. So praise be to God for Psalms 103. Let it be a psalm of you and me. If we can say a psalm of David, a psalm of Jason, a psalm of George, a psalm of uh, Cedric, a psalm of Suman, and all our names could be written if these verses, these verses apply in your life. May God bless you and may God give us grace to live every day for his glory. And whatever we do with our mouth, with our hands, with everything that we do, may it be for the glory of God. May God bless you with this word.